The commander who oversees U.S. operations in the Middle East is warning that the threat from Iran and its proxies remain high. Marine General Kenneth McKenzie's comment comes after several U.S. Re retaliatory strikes hit five weapons depots of the Iranian-backed group in Iraq. Juliana Lainka is in our London studios where she has more on this and other international news in around the world in five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom in London. A top U.S. commander for the Middle East has said the threat posed from Iran remains high after America's retaliatory airstrikes on an Iran-backed militia in Iraq that officials blamed for killing two U.S. troops earlier this week. And that the United States acted in self-defense in response to a direct and deliberate attack, a direct and deliberate attack on an Iraqi base that hosts coalition service members. So the bottom line is I think the tension is still very high. I think the risk is still significant in the theater. And even though we may go days or a period of time without anything happening, I think we're still at a, at a period of significant risk. In Iraq, security personnel inspected the aftermath of the airstrike at the Kabbalah International Airport construction site. The military have condemned the attack, saying they had killed six people, and Iraqi authorities described them as a targeted aggression against the nation's formal armed forces. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has said that New Zealanders have become more engaged with the Muslim community in the years since a gunman killed 51 people at two mosques in the South Island city of Christchurch. In an emotional news conference, Arden addressed the country's growing threat from the far right. A year on, I believe New Zealand and its people have fundamentally changed. I can't see how you could have an event like this and not. But the challenge for us will be ensuring that in our everyday actions, in every opportunity where we see bullying, harassment, racism, discrimination, calling it out as a nation, that is when we'll show that we each individually have a role to play in making sure New Zealand has fundamentally changed for the better. Residents and survivors of the shooting attended a community prayer in the area, paying tribute to the victims. Uh, there are a lot of broken hearts, there's a lot of healing taking place. Uh, from what I understood the past week, interacting with a lot of the victims, there are a lot of stories still left unsaid and there is a lot of pain and, and, and the community is still shattered to be honest. However, there is a lot of healing as well, there's a lot of um, positive stories coming out as well. An Australian national faces 92 charges in relation to the attacks on Al Noor in Linwood mosques. He has pleaded not guilty and faces trial in June. Officials have stepped up security for the memorial events, which are expected to be attended by thousands after a new threat was reported last week. Greece has sworn in the country's first female president for a five-year term at a scaled-down ceremony due to the coronavirus outbreak. 64-year-old Katerina sakal Aropoulou will succeed Prokopis Pavlopoulos. The largely ceremonial position has always been held by men. Sakil Laropoulou was elected by parliament in January by 261 out of 300 lawmakers, one of the broadest cross-party majorities in Greek history. She has set out her priorities as tackling the economic crisis, climate change and mass migration. El piso. I hope that the election of a woman to the highest post in the country will improve the position of all women in the country, both in the community and in the family. It is time for the women of this country to realise that they can reach any height they dream of with their worth without facing obstacles just because they are women. Almost a year after Cyclone Idai tore through southern Africa, leaving 1,300 people dead and many more missing, the World Food Programme is said to be struggling to keep up with the demands of those who are still in need in Mozambique, one of the worst affected areas. The government has promised government to upgrade those promised in promised settlements upgrade with stronger those. buildings, but says it's been held up by delayed funding and a host of reporting regulations imposed by different donors. Last year, the International Organization for Migration said nearly 100,000 people were still displaced in Mozambique alone. And finally, some light relief for music lovers in Germany who are social distancing to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Musician Igor Levitt 
took to the social media site Twitter on Thursday evening to stream an impromptu rendition of Beethoven's Waldstein Sonata Op 53 from his Berlin flat to entertain audiences penned up at home. And it appears as if he's not the only one. Across Germany, opera houses and concert halls are witnessing a boom in free online concerts as audience less musicians step up to the plate. Levitt's 25-minute concert has been retweeted thousands of times and has thousands of likes also. And that's your international news around the world in five. Thank you, Juliana. We have some sports news now. Here's Charles Arrug. Welcome to Sports News. Lagos State have emerged the overall winners of the Maiden Maltinos Cool Games. At the conclusion of the national finals held at the Yaba College of Technology, Team Lagos topped the medals table with 21 gold, 15 silver and 5 bronze medals. The Maltina School Games is a new intervention in school sports by the country's number one family drink brewed by Nigeria Breweries PLC. The final day produced exciting results as the best of athletes from the various state finals slugged it out for medals. Ajayi Konyisola from Lagos emerges the fastest boy in the 100 meter senior event, clocking 11 18 seconds. Joy Ojo, also from Lagos, wins the girls' final in 12 06 seconds. Lagos finishes top, followed by FCT Abuja and Kanu in third. We already have big brands, you know, supporting sports competition like football, basketball, and the likes. And we saw that there was a gap in the athletic space. And this is something that a lot of schools actually participate in almost every year with their school inter house sports. We have already been very active in supporting school inter house sports across the nation over the years and we felt that this was an opportunity that we could have to create this platform. Mortina is committed to seeing through with this platform in terms of having a more long-term strategy to developing children. The Mortina School Games is here to stay uh, and I would say that this is one of the strongest platforms that you will see in sports within Nigeria developing children. We had um, Sheye Ogunlewe, uh, international athlete, came around to speak to them, motivate them that, okay, I was in your shoes. I was once a student and then I combined education with sport. Gone are those days when people in sport cannot make a complete sentence. Senior secondary school in Kedja, Lagos State. Outstanding meters. athletes from the Maltina School Games will get a chance to represent Nigeria at international competitions. And uh, the gold medalists, Victoria Federal Government College, Janik, 5.20 meters. Meanwhile, the Federal Ministry of Health has advised the organizers of the National Sports Festival to conduct proper screening of athletes and spectators during the Games to avoid the spread of the coronavirus. With the cancellation of sporting events across the globe, Health Minister Dr. Osage Ehanire says the screening is precautionary and that the country has no plans of cancelling the festival except if the need arises. Only two cases have been confirmed across Nigeria and they're all tested negative. And the Confederation of African Football has postponed the 2021 African Cup of Nations qualifiers scheduled for March the 25th to the 31st. CAF says the decision was taken because several African players come from some countries in Europe and Asia which have been severely affected by the virus and their clubs have refused to release them for the games. The continent's football governing body also said African governments have placed strong restrictions on travel as well as lockdown and quarantine for people coming from the affected countries. The FIFA Women's Under-20 World Cup qualifiers and African Women's Nations qualifiers have also been postponed. Over in Europe, the German Football League DFL has called off all weekend matches in the Bundesliga and second tier. The DFL recommended that both leagues be suspended until April the 2nd. The DFL said the decision was taken in view of the dynamics of the events with new coronavirus infections and corresponding suspected cases directly related to the leagues. That's it on Sports News. It's back to Millicent.
Man, thanks, Charles. And the main news again. The deposed Emir of Kano, Mohamedou Senussi II, today left Awer in Nasarawa state on his way to Lagos, following court order releasing him from detention after his dethronement by the Kano state government. Also today, the federal government confirmed that the second case of COVID-19 in Nigeria tested negative to the virus after a week-long treatment and care, just as 179 contact cases were also released from isolation. And top U.S. commander for the Middle East today said threat posed from Iran remained high after America's retaliatory airstrikes on an Iran-backed militia in Iraq. That's news at 10 tonight. My thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker. Have a good night and a great weekend.